Jean-Paul Marat was taking a medicinal bath for his debilitating skin condition when a young woman from Caen, Charlotte Corday, appeared at his flat, claiming to have vital information on the escaped Girondins. Marat asked for her to enter and gave her an audience by his bath. She explained what was happening in Caen, reciting a list of the offending deputies. After he had finished writing out the list, Corday rose from her chair, drawing out from her corset a five-inch kitchen knife and brought it down into Marat's chest. Marat cried out his last words to his wife and died. Once French Revolution's most influential journalist, his death served to deepen divisions among the revolutionists in the months preceding the reign of terror. The French Revolution began at the end of the 18th century when France faced a financial crisis after spending too much money on the American War of Independence and King Louis XVI's lavish lifestyle. The people of France, especially the poor and the peasants, suffered from hunger, high taxes and social inequality. They protested, looted and went on strike against the oppressive monarchy. To deal with the situation, the King's Minister of Finance, Charles Alexandre de Calonne, attempted to pass reforms to cut government spending, revive free trade methods, authorize the sale of church property, and establish a universal land value tax. It was rejected by the Assembly of Notables. Instead, they suggested to summon the Estates General. Louis XVI reluctantly called for a meeting of the Estates General in May 1789, which was a representative assembly of the three social classes in France, the clergy, the nobility and the middle class. The king wanted them to approve his plan to reform the tax system and make everyone pay their fair share. However, the Estates General had not met since 1614, and the population of France had changed a lot since then. The middle class, or the third estate, made up 98% of the people, but they had the same voting power as the other two estates. They demanded more representation and the right to vote as individuals, not as groups. They also wanted to get rid of the privileges and the veto power of the nobles, who resisted any change that would threaten their status. The debate over the voting procedure became so heated that it overshadowed the original purpose of the meeting and the authority of the king who had summoned it. On June 17th, the Third Estate decided to break away from the Estates General and form their own National Assembly. They swore an oath in a nearby tennis court on June 20th, promising not to disband until they had written a constitution for France. Many of the clergy and some of the liberal nobles joined them, and on June 27th, the king reluctantly accepted the National Assembly as the new representative body of France. Meanwhile, in Paris, the people were in a state of panic and anger. They heard rumours of a possible military coup by the king and his allies, and they wanted to arm themselves and defend their rights. On July 14th, they attacked and captured the Bastille, a fortress and a prison that symbolised the royal tyranny. They seized the weapons and gunpowder stored there and freed the prisoners. This event, which is now celebrated as a national holiday in France, marked the beginning of the French Revolution. The country was swept by a wave of revolutionary passion and mass hysteria. The peasants, who had been exploited for years, rose up against the tax collectors, landlords and aristocrats who had oppressed them. They plundered and burned their houses in a rural uprising known as the Great Fear. This forced the nobles to flee France and prompted the National Constituent Assembly to end feudalism on August 4, 1789. At the end of August, the Assembly adopted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, a document that expressed the democratic ideals of the Enlightenment thinkers. It declared the Assembly's commitment to replace the old regime with a system based on equal opportunity, 
freedom of speech, popular sovereignty and representative government. King Louis of France, Queen Marie Antoinette and their immediate family attempted to escape from Paris to Montmédy in June 1791, where the king wished to initiate a counter-revolution by joining up with royalist troops. They disguised themselves as ordinary people and left Paris at night. However, they were recognized and stopped in the town of varennes en argonne about 50 kilometers from their destination. Their arrest caused a huge scandal and increased the public's distrust and hatred of the monarchy. On September 3rd, 1791, France's first written constitution was adopted, reflecting the more moderate views in the assembly. It established a constitutional monarchy where the king had the right to veto laws and appoint ministers. This did not please the influential radicals like Robespierre, Danton and Marat, who started to rally popular support for a more republican form of government and for the trial of King Louis. In April 1792, the newly elected Legislative Assembly declared war on Austria and Prussia, where they believed that the French exiles were plotting against the revolution. They also wanted to spread their revolutionary ideas across Europe through war. On the home front, however, the political crisis took a radical turn when a group of insurgents led by the extremist Jacobin attacked the royal palace in Paris and arrested the king on August 10, 1792. The next month, amid a wave of violence in which Parisian rebels killed hundreds of suspected enemies of the revolution, the Legislative Assembly was replaced by the National Convention, which proclaimed the end of the monarchy and the birth of the French Republic. On January 21st, 1793, they sent King Louis, who was found guilty of treason and crimes against the state, to the guillotine. His wife Marie Antoinette met the same fate nine months later. After the king's execution, the war with various European powers and the intense divisions within the National Convention led the French Revolution to its most violent and chaotic phase. In June 1793, the Jacobins took over the National Convention from the more moderate Girondins and implemented a series of radical measures, such as creating a new calendar and eliminating Christianity. They also launched the Bloody Reign of Terror, a ten-month period in which thousands of people who were accused of being against the revolution were guillotined. Many of the executions were ordered by Robespierre, who dominated the harsh committee of public safety until he was executed himself on July 28, 1794. The end of Robespierre's rule started the Thermidorian reaction a moderate phase in which the French people rejected the excesses of the Reign of Terror. On August 22, 1795, the National Convention, which was mostly made up of Girondins, who had survived the Reign of Terror, approved a new constitution that created France's first two-chamber legislature. The executive power would be in the hands of a five-member directory chosen by the Parliament. The Royalists and the Jacobins opposed the new regime, but they were quickly silenced by the army, which was now led by a young and successful general named Napoleon Bonaparte. The Directory's four years of power were full of financial problems, popular dissatisfaction, inefficiency, and most of all, political corruption. By the late 1790s, the directors depended almost entirely on the military to keep their authority and had given up much of their power to the generals in the field. On November 9, 1799, as the people grew more frustrated with their leadership, Napoleon Bonaparte staged a coup d'etat, ending the directory and making himself France's first consul. This event marked the end of the French Revolution and the beginning of the Napoleonic era, during which France would dominate much of Europe.